Good evening, saints of God. It's Reverend Matthew uh, coming to bring you a word today that the Lord has put on my heart. I wanted to share it with his people. And uh, I'm actually going to be speaking about uh, idols today and uh, how idols get into our lives and how they complicate things. And I'm pulling out texts uh, today from the uh, book of Habakkuk, actually coming out of Habakkuk chapter 2. And I'm probably going to touch a little bit of Romans 1 because I think uh, that these scriptures are so intertwined that I really believe that uh, the Apostle Paul uh, read uh, the book of Habakkuk, especially chapter 2, uh, right before uh, beginning to write the book of Romans. And, and, and there's a lot of similarities between the two, but we're going to look at some things. I want to start at uh, the book of Habakkuk, which is one of the uh, Old Testament uh, uh, prophets. And we're looking at chapter 2. It's only a three-chapter uh, uh, um, text. But we're going to look at chapter 2, and I'm going to begin with the 18th verse. And the, the 18th verse of the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, reads, What profiteth, what profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof have graven it? The molten image and a teacher of lies that the maker of his work trusteth therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that saith to the wood. Awake to the dumb stone, arise. It shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Man, what a powerful text that is, uh, this book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, where we see Habakkuk uh, having a prophecy on idols. And what the text is basically saying is, Woe or pity unto him that say to the wood, Awake or to the dumb stone arise. Back in the day, they used to make idols out of wood. I, uh, you know, you have the old uh, obelisk looking uh, uh, the graven images, or you have, uh, they would take stone and they would build a, a god out of it and they would worship it all the way back to uh, Abraham's father. Uh, uh, Terah did the same thing. Um, we, we, we see idols all throughout the course of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And we actually see God, one of the reasons why God decided to punish uh, Israel and Judah and have them become captives was because of their idol worship. Now, how does this apply to us today in 2017? Well, a lot of us have a lot of different things that we create as idols that we cover with gold and silver and we expect to speak back to us. And these things get in the way. God said in his in 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 the um uh, 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 the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses that thou shall not have no other gods before him and that we should not make any graven images of him or any other thing that we want to claim as God. And a lot of times when we focus on certain things, we have to be careful because it can become an idol to us. Our job can become an idol. We want to have so much success in our particular uh, uh, field of employment that we can start to idolize it and, and have it take its place of God. We start to worship the job more than we worship the God that provided the job to us and that gives us the feet and the legs and the common sense to go to work to, provide, uh, to do these jobs. Amen. We also see in, um, uh, uh, we also, another thing that could become a, uh, an idol, our cars or our money. You know, our money can become an idol. We can, we can become so um, uh, money hungry that uh, money becomes an idol to us and that we uh, want to obtain, do anything to obtain money, to obtain riches. Uh, our relationships, our spouses could become our idol, where we can start to begin to worship our spouse in a way that is that uh, um, interferes with our relationship with God. Our children, I've seen this happen before, where we can say, oh, we love our children so much, but you can love your child to the point where if you put your child before God and before your relationship with God, your child now has become an idol and has disrupted the uh, uh, very fabric of the relationship that you, can, that you have with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All these things can become idols. Uh, like I said, homes, cars, uh, 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 jewelry, money, relationships, children. All these things, if we're not careful, can get 
in the way. And we can begin to idolize the very thing that God has blessed us with, whether it be a relationship, a child, uh, a car, a home, a job, or income. And we start to worship that thing over the very creator. Paul mentions this in Romans 1. I'm going to read a very powerful text in Romans 1. Beginning with the, the 21st verse, Paul writes in Romans 1, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. You know, that Benz logo, or that Mercedes logo, or that house, or that, 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 that in God we trust printed on paper. We idolize these things, and they become idols. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. God has now begun to sear your mind because you have idolized something over God. And you have idolized the creation over the creator. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature. Here it is. More than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And that was Romans 1, 21 through 25. So we have to be careful. Um in life, not to create idols, not to create something that is going to separate us from God, not to create something uh, uh, that can take the place of God, where we begin to idolize and begin to worship that thing. And we talked about some of the things that we uh, have challenges with worship, with, with, with challenges with making sure that we keep in its right place. We always have to be thankful of God because God gives us these things. God gives us our homes. He gives us our cars. He gives us financial stability. He gives us uh, our relationships, but he, and he gives gifts without repentance. But the thing is, when we start begin to worship that gift, when we begin to worship that job, when we begin to worship that relationship above the one that gave it to us, then we are in error and we, are op we open ourselves to the chastisement of God because he will chastise he who he loves. He will chastise his children as a father will chastise his own son. So I just pray that we can keep things in perspective as, um, you know, as we become goal oriented as people, as we start to move forward as people, as we continue to obtain uh, favor from the Lord, that we be careful not to idolize the favor, amen, and always give honor to the one who has given us the favor. And that is only one, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is our intercessor between God and man. I pray this has blessed you in Jesus' name. Amen.